I mean, one of the, the smartest people that I've interviewed is actually Freeway Ricky Ross. Yeah. Who he's was... going gonna to do a book signing in my barbershop. So. Dope. Dope. I've interviewed him a bunch of times. Yeah. I mean, he's damn near a regular on the show. Yeah. And, you know, he was essentially the biggest drug dealer on the West Coast. Yeah. I mean, his drugs were financing wars in South America, yeah, <laughs> Unknown, unbeknownst to him. Um, and, you know, he explained to me in one of our interviews that... At that time, uh, uh, you know, 100 Keys was a lot of cocaine. You know, uh, when I started in the 70s, three grams was a lot of cocaine to me, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but now, you know, I was in jail with people who had 20 tons of cocaine. But everything else, in terms of his business sense and, and his, point. was all on point. Like, for example, he posted something on, um, on his Instagram page, which I, I posted on Vlad Stocks, which I thought was kind of brilliant. Is, uh, you know, he has these various keys. And, you know, key 18 yeah. is don't front what you can't lose. Yeah, I saw you post yeah. that. And he said, in your dealings with other people, you will sometimes get taken advantage of or stolen from. Sometimes you will lose something you meant as an investment. This is just part of life. Don't front anything you are not also willing to lose. As you exercise this principle more often, you will begin to see that you really don't have anything to lose. The realization that you have nothing to lose opens you up to a great reservoir of untapped power that eludes most people. That's one of the most brilliant things I've ever read. You know, as someone who's frontage money that I ended up losing and you know, you get mad about it afterwards. Had I read this before I did that, it would've been like, oh, okay. You know, this is a trap that all of us have fallen into at one point or another. Man, a friend of mine told me about socks. He said, man, you know, and this is someone whose father had been successful. He's successful. His children are probably going to be successful. He said, you know, when it comes to stocks, man, I just buy it ten, twenty thousand dollars at a time. I buy it and I forget about it. Like I never like he he treats it as though he has the money. Like the ten thousand dollars he would have wasted in the club, he'll he'll pivot to the stock market, right? And he says, I don't care what happens. Within five, six years, I always see my money grow. Within 10, 11 years, I always see my money grow. He does the S&P 5. He, yeah. well, what he does not do is over put in. Like he only uses the money he would have wasted partying. Mm. And he's grown that money. You know what yeah. I mean? Like you can, you can spend a lot of money in Atlanta partying. And that was, just, yeah. that was just genius to me. So in matters of fronting and loaning people, like when I loan someone, son, generally I just think I'm not going to get it back. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Exactly. So and, and that makes it easier for me to tell people no. Yeah. The people that I can't that I know can't pay me. No, I can't do it, and here's why. You need two grand, you over you overspent for your birthday, then you shouldn't have overspent. <laughs> That's just nothing I can do. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because if I do that, I, I hurt my own economy and my own household, and I'm not willing to do that. The other thing is sometimes, though I've paid for my lessons. Sometimes I front the stuff out, it's it's gotten out there, but I'm glad that the thing that happened happened because I learned something. You know, from it, you know, or that person's owed me a favor that came back. But yeah, I, I believe in saying no a lot more than yes. The more money I've I've accrued, the more I've learned to say no to What's people up? because it's not easy to get and it's not easy to get back once you give it out. Yeah, hundred percent. And you know, speaking of that, in that episode, there was a scene where you and the uh, you know the Crip homies went to a bank to try to get a loan. Went to, yeah, went to and yeah. they they try to explain how their revenue comes in. <laughs> you can tell the loan officer was like. All right, y'all selling drugs. I, I'm not going to give you a loan for this shit. Like <laughs> <laughs> marijuana pioneers. <laughs> but didn't you guys went to a black owned bank, right? Yeah, I went to a black owned and bank. And apparently that bank got another eight hundred thousand dollars in deposits because of the episodes. I don't know. Maybe I think so. Uh, um, I, I know we got it's we, in my notes. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. That you know, but we're happy for that. Like, um, I want, I want to see. You know, I want to see all us win. Isn't that it? Like, you yeah. know, so yeah, I'm glad. I, I really wanted to touch people in a real way. I wanted the restaurants we visited, the bus company we use, the banks and credit unions. I want those people to see an influx of money and business because, again, if our community is strong, the greater community is stronger. So I'm glad to hear that.